Hey, what's going on, visionaries? Jason Osborne, JO Vision, back again with another video. And today, well, we're talking about making your transition into becoming a professional freelance photographer, meaning you're getting paid for your work. You know, you might be thinking seriously about taking that jump or even be thinking about how you can make money with your photography. Well, I'm going to give you some do's and don'ts of becoming a professional photographer so that it can help you along your way. Coming up. Okay, so let's get the bad news out first, the don'ts, all right? I like to end on a positive note, so that's what we're gonna do, all right? These are my don'ts for people who are trying to transition into becoming a professional photographer. Either you're a hobbyist or you are semi-professional, but you're thinking about making the jump. Don't expect to be able to quit your day job, all right? Now, there are some photographers out there that rely solely on the camera, all right? As a full-time gig, they bring in enough money to rely on their uh, camera to survive. And I did it for most of 2018. I did it for 10 months and it is possible, but don't expect to be able to quit your day job when you decide that you wanna become a freelance or a professional photographer. There's a lot of people who do it as a side hustle and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get sucked in to the misconception that if you're not shooting full time, then you're not a professional or you haven't made it, all right? Just because you have a main full-time job and you use the photography to supplement your income, you are still making money. You are still a professional, so don't get caught into the whole, well, I'm not shooting full-time thing. It is okay if you're not shooting full-time. Also, you don't want to expect to quit your day job because you're gonna need money to supplement your new photography business. And that is where your day job can come in. Put your day job to work for your photography business. My second don't is don't rely solely on photography. Maybe try your hand at video work too, all right? Being a triple threat or a double threat at least when you can do photography and video can open up so many doors. Just because you are a photographer doesn't mean that you have to stick to just doing photography and taking pictures. Also, think about hosting workshops. If you're really talented at editing, uh, hosting editing or doing one-on-one -on -one lessons, um, there's a plenty of different avenues for a talented photographer to take to be able to bring in multiple sources of income based off the camera. Doesn't mean that it has to come from the camera, but it can be based off the camera. So don't just solely rely on taking pictures and photography as your main source. Go ahead and dabble in video. Go ahead and dabble in hosting workshops or doing lessons or anything like that. And really try your hand and find out what you're really talented at and expose that talent so you can make as much money as possible based off your camera. Don't expect a ton of business at first, okay? It's gonna take some time and some traction to really build for your clientele, the word of mouth, and your business network to grow. So don't expect a huge amount of business to come when you post that first, you know, uh, post on social media announcing that you're now a you know a freelance photographer you're a professional now and you here are your rates and don't expect people to just be like oh shoot me shoot me shoot me shoot my family do all this don't expect all of that okay a lot of times business businesses lose money in their first to two years of being in operation so you have to understand that it can be a grind it is a marathon it is not a sprint so you have to make sure that you are definitely patient and letting the business come to you and letting being patient and letting it grow okay my last don't is pretty much common sense, but don't get lazy. Even if it is part-time, you have to put in full-time hours, okay? You have to lay the groundwork so that your business can thrive. You can't just expect to pick up a camera and expect people to wanna give you money because you're calling yourself a photographer. The grind and the hard work is what speaks to your clients and it speaks to your work and is what brings more clients in. So you cannot get lazy. Do not get lazy. I'm repeating that one more time. Do not get lazy. It is important that you put in the work, that you're always marketing yourself, that you're coming up with new ideas, that you're not afraid to try new ideas, all right? That you're going after clients in unconventional ways that other people might not have thought about. Doing those things can help your business grow and it's something that will help fuel your motivation to keep going. If you get lazy one day, turns to two days, turns to three days, that you're putting things off, next thing you know, you haven't picked up your camera in a month and no one has emailed you or contacted you to do a paid shoot. Now that we got all the negatives and the don'ts out the way, here are some of my do's to help you transition into being a professional photographer. Do invest in yourself and your business, okay? 
Now, I'm not saying you have to go out and invest in all the newest gear and the newest lenses and things like that. Buying used is fine, but anything that can help increase your brand, increase your product value, you want to invest in yourself, okay? When you start making money, your product needs to reflect that. You wanna make sure that your product shows or represents the price point that you're at, all right? When you increase your skill set, that's going to bring a higher value client because they're going to feel that you can deliver on the high quality content that they're looking for. Spend money to make money, baby. And that's the absolute truth. So here's another do. Do shoot other types of photography. If your goal is to make as much money as possible with photography, then you have to shoot other types of photography than what you're used to shooting. So don't be afraid to branch out of your comfort zone and to shoot different types of photography to bring in the money and to get that kind of job. Because there's nothing more valuable to a client than a versatile photographer that can not only give them great headshots, but might be able to take product photography, pictures of their product that they're selling, and then also might be able to, you know, give them some lifestyle shots for their Instagram to really increase their brand awareness. So you really want to be a versatile photographer and be able to shoot whatever your client needs you to shoot if you want to bring in that kind of money. Now, I'm not saying that you have to switch your whole style up or abandon your most favorite type of photography. I myself consider myself a portrait photographer. I love taking portraits. I have a beautiful, you know, Instagram feed that I think you guys should definitely check out. Go ahead and follow me at J-O Vision. Selfish plug, but whatever. You're watching me, right? And I love taking portraits and things like that. But I shoot a lot of families. I do a lot of events. I shoot weddings. Like these are the kind of photography uh, opportunities that I get to bring in the kind of money that I need to bring in for the side income or when I was shooting full time to survive. So you really just want to make sure that you're not limiting yourself and that you're opening yourself up to different types of photography, even if it's not your main genre, to at least bring in that cash flow. Another do, which I think is highly underrated for a lot of photographers who just start out, is starting an LLC, all right, a limited liability company. And really what it does, it limits what can be um, taken away from you if you're sued. It pretty much separates your personal assets from your business assets. So say I have an LLC and you know a model gets hurt during a shoot that I'm doing and decides that she's gonna sue me. Okay, well, if I didn't have an LLC, my house, my car, my bank account, all that stuff would be on the table to be thrown into the litigation. But with an LLC, only thing that she could touch is what's under that LLC. All my personal assets are off the table. So that's one major reason that you would like to start an LLC. Another good reason is, is because you can open up a business bank account, meaning you can get possibly a business line of credit. And that means you'll be able to get your own tax ID number for your business and be able to write things off like new gear, uh, new backdrops, you know, anything that could be considered an expense for your photography business, you would be able to write it off during tax time. And so that's very important to do and don't sleep on getting an LLC. Look into it, find out what your state requirements are and file for one so that you really have a legitimate business to fall back on. Do network and build relationships. You know, I have gotten a lot of jobs as a freelance photographer from other photographers. Maybe they're busy that day or maybe uh, they don't shoot or they're not comfortable shooting the kind of photography that they were approached to do. You know, there's nothing wrong with throwing a bone to another photographer if you don't want to do the job or you feel like they're better for the job. Those things create building relationships and networking because that's going to allow your business to thrive when you have other photographers looking out for you. You never know when you know a photographer is going to get a great opportunity that they just can't shoot. So you want to be the first person that they think of when they're thinking, okay, hmm, I can't do this job, but I know someone else who is also a great photographer that could do this job. Next thing you know, you're getting the text, hey man, are you available? I have a job for you, boom. What I will say is this, make sure you return the favor. If there's a job that you can't do, you throw that bone back to the photographer that helped you out. Or maybe even give them a little 10%, 20% little finder's fee from the, uh, from the cut that you made off the, off the project. There are different things that you can do to show appreciation to other photographers, but you definitely wanna network and build with your photographer community. And my last do is to step it up like a professional, okay? Don't expect clients to just hand, them, hand you your money if you're not being a professional about it, okay? You definitely wanna step up your skill set, your appearance, 
your brand as a professional and market it as such. You definitely need a website. Don't just rely on your Instagram, especially if you're posting your photography and your personal life on the same Instagram page. When clients want to potentially hire you, they're not interested in your personal life. And, and it all means your personal life could actually turn them away from hiring you. All they care about is the product that you're offering and if it's gonna work for what they need it for. So you wanna make sure that you are definitely have a website with your best work on it, you have business cards, okay? And you know, any other materials that could add to your brand awareness as a professional photographer that can help you. You want marketing that's gonna show you as a professional, okay? So it's one thing to go on Facebook or go on your Instagram stories and say, hey, you know, I'm doing this sale for this many photos, come, you know, hit me up. But there's different ways you can go about it. Are you simply just typing that out and just hitting post? Or are you getting a nice template online, creating an awesome graphic that go along with that post so that people feel that you're actually being professional and that you're worth investing in? There are different ways that you can go about marketing yourself as a professional, but you can't just expect people to give you their money or hire you or book you for shoots if you're not doing the same thing as far as advertising that they're gonna get professional quality work back so don't just hit post when you're decided to do a random you know sale for the weekend or you're running a new special research some online templates canva.com they have a beautiful uh, amount of templates that you can use for your Instagram stories and your Facebook that all you have to do really is just fill in the blanks and then you hit post and there you go you have a beautiful ad that's actually marketing yourself and your brand as a professional and it's gonna make customers feel like yeah this person he has it together she has it together and you know I want to hire them for my next shoot so if you like this video today and uh, these tips helped you out maybe you're thinking about becoming a professional photographer or freelance photographer and making some money with your camera and uh, maybe you're a little lost as far as the do's and the don'ts please give me a thumbs up I need all the likes I can get so please make sure that you hit that thumbs up button that like button and like this video if you have a question about anything that i talked about today or maybe a comment go ahead and leave it in the section below you know i love conversing with all of my visionaries out there that watch these videos i always respond to every single comment so make sure that you leave one if you have anything that you want to uh, talk about if you haven't yet please subscribe to the youtube channel I don't know if you guys have been checking, but this channel is growing consistently, and I am so appreciative of everyone who has subscribed to the channel, everyone who uh, did the contest, everyone who just came by and maybe just randomly found my channel and hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I got more videos on the way. It was about a three week little break. I'm sorry, March was a crazy month for me, business wise with the photography. So thank you for being patient for this video. I hope you guys have checked out all my other recent videos that I dropped in March. And yeah, hit that subscribe button. And also make sure you hit that notification bell too, because you definitely want to be aware when I drop my videos first. Um, I don't really have a consistent schedule. Sometimes I drop on Monday mornings, sometimes I drop on Wednesdays, sometimes I drop on the weekends. So definitely hit that notification bell so that you are the first to get notified when a new video from JO Vision drops. This is Jason Osborne, JO Vision, and I will see you guys on the next video. I'll talk to you later. Peace.